So, just to set the, um, the, you know, atmosphere and like, why we're here, so everyone is on the same page. The purpose of this um, time, the worship night, is just to come together to lift up the name of Jesus. And it's not just like a group of us just singing. We, this is us lifting our worship to God because He deserves it, and He's good. And so we're just going to sing songs in adoration and praise of the Most High. Okay. So if it's okay, you guys can stand, sing along, because simple songs. Jesus, 
Bible, I don't remember what scripture, but it says that it says that um, the name of Jesus is above every other name. That so at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee will bow in heaven, on earth, and under the earth, and say, and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So what I want to draw out from that is it says he has been given the name that is above every other name and so when we're singing jesus jesus we're not just like calling the names not just some lyrics there's an understanding that whatever thing has a name the name of jesus is above that and so you might come here with whatever issues problems sickness but then if it has a name you know the name of jesus is above it and so when we sing jesus we're telling that thing that name thing that the name of Jesus is above your name. And so whatever it is has to bow and say Jesus is Lord. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You make darkness. You make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. You silence fear. Jesus, Jesus. You make Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. 
and your will be done here as in heaven spirit of god fall fresh on us we need your
worship tonight in the presence of God this is an opportunity for God to speak to us for God to bring clarity for God to bring deliverance for God to bring healing for God to work a miracle in the presence of God that's where miracles happen when God is here that's when change happens right now I don't know about you but I feel the presence of God so we're expecting tonight that there are going to be miracles. We're expecting to leave this place changed. To enter our new week with a new mindset, with new attitudes, with a new understanding of who God is. We ask God to come and meet us here. And we're going to ask him, Lord, for a miracle. I don't know where you are, I don't know what you need, but right now I believe that God can work a miracle. Oh. Amen. A miracle can happen now For the Spirit of the Lord is here The Spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around. Oh, the Spirit of the Lord is Yeah. 
time so far. But the Spirit of the Lord is here. I feel it. I feel God's presence. And I want to invite His Spirit among us. I want Him to sweep over us like a rushing wind. And that's what this song is about. It's about God's Spirit coming over us like a fresh wind. Spirit sound, rushing wind, fire of God falling in. Holy Ghost, breathe on us, we pray. As we repent, turn from sin, revival ember smoldering, breath of God, fan us in The fragrance of heaven, pour your spirit out, pour your spirit out, oh, Spirit 
sisters without borders let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me take me deeper than my feet could ever wander and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my rise my soul will rest in your embrace for i am yours and you salvation journey I've realized that the more I'm saved like the longer I'm saved the more I need Jesus <laughs> like I, I can't do anything by myself <laughs> at all I can't walk through this life by myself whether I don't have friends whether I don't have family I might be able to survive a bit, but without Jesus, I'm nothing. I'm nothing. The breath in my lungs is from God himself. This voice that I use to sing is for God, is from God. And the least I can do is worship him. The least I can do is give him all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Without him, I wouldn't be here. Without him, I wouldn't be speaking to you right now. Without him, I wouldn't be singing. I'm not enough unless you
any of you have ever been like starving 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 hungry or you're just parched like you're so thirsty you'll drink anything okay maybe not anything but you'll drink anything you know when you need like you're desperate for something in life we can get to a point where we're just so empty 
or you just like you just need something and sometimes you can't even put a name to it you don't really know what it is but you know that something's missing and I want to tell you today if you're not saved that Jesus is what you're looking for and it doesn't matter where you go and it doesn't matter what you do it doesn't matter how much you try and fill that hole the hole is in the shape of Jesus he's the only one that can fill it he's the only one that can satisfy that hunger that you have that thirst that you have only Jesus can satisfy so this next song is called only you can satisfy and the words are pretty easy you'll you'll pick it up but this is the truth we're telling you the truth Jesus is the only one who can fulfill you the only one
satisfy my soul. Only you can satisfy.
you high Yahweh, Yahweh We lift you high Yahweh, Yahweh God, we lift you
Lord Most High. Yahweh, Yahweh. He is God Most High. Yahweh, Yahweh. He is El Shaddai. Yahweh, Yahweh. He is Adonai.
and based on what I've done. This is goodness and mercy and the power of the blood. This is goodness and mercy and the power of the blood.
Jesus paid it all. Jesus paid it all. And all to him I owe. And sin had left a crimson stain, and he washed it white as snow. Jesus paid it all. And Give him glory, give him praise. Father, we thank you for who you are. There is none like you. God, we honor your name in this place. Just want to take a few moments just to speak to all of you here. Want to read a quick scripture for you. You know, as we were preparing for this uh, concert, I thought about what I, I will share with you. And you know, one of the thoughts that came to mind is, uh, you know, in life, sometimes you need people to stand in your place. You need people to back you up. You need somebody to actually hold your hand sometimes because that's how life goes. From the day that you're born, if you haven't realized, you're going to need people in your life. Human beings, we are relational beings. From the day that you're born, you're born as a baby, you don't know nothing in this world. And your mama has to watch you. You know, at the doctors, they slap you, you cry. Your mama takes you home, and then they start feeding you. All you do is eat, sleep, do, do, eat, sleep, do, do. And you know what? As you grow through life, you need people. It doesn't matter how old you are. The truth is, you know, I've heard the saying, once a man, twice a child. And you know what that applies to each and every one of us. It doesn't matter who you are. And when I thought about what to say today, you know, I'm reminded of things in my life where I looked at my life and I was like, you know what, at every stage of my life, there is always been somebody to hold my hand. Even in the darkest of days, there was always somebody to hold my hand. There's somebody who came looked after me when I was sick. There are days when I was so sick, I had the fever. And, you know, I thought this is it. I thought I was just going to die. And you know what? As I was sleeping in my bed, I remember my dad coming into the room where I was, and he brought some medication. He said, no, I wake up, take this medication. He gave it to me. I took it. I was puking, and then I went back to bed. You know what? I look at my life and I realize at every stage of life there is always been somebody there regardless of how tough life is. 
But the truth is, you know, as we get into this world, there is a day that you're going to leave this earth and you stand before God. And you know what the truth is? When you get on the other side, there is nothing that you can change. But how many know we have a Savior that can stand in our place? The Bible says, Jesus came, he gave his life, he died on the cross, and he rose again on the third day. And that was because he purchased our salvation. He, he overcame sin and death. And so the Bible says he forever lives to make intercession for the saints. If you are in this place and you don't know Jesus, maybe you even have been to church. We're not talking about people that attend church. I used to be a religious guy. You know, I was one of those that goes to church on a Sunday. There is no way you could not get me, you could not find me in church on a Sunday. I used to do that religiously. And then you know what? Monday to Saturday, I was the devil's cousin. I do all sorts of things. But you know what? 2005, I came to this, you know, when I came to church, I realized, you know what? It's not about attending church. It's about having a relationship with Jesus Christ. Because that's what saves. You understand? You gotta know the man. You gotta get to Jesus Christ. Because he is the only way, the truth, and the life. The Bible says no one can come to the Father except through Jesus. So listen, my friends. It doesn't matter who you are. You may even go to church. You may have a cousin or auntie or uncle or father or mother that go to church. They have their personal relationship with Jesus. If you don't have your personal relationship with God, listen, just because you know about him or you know about the church, that doesn't make you right with God. This is an issue that you and you alone have to take part in. You have to open your heart. Jesus says, I stand at the door and I knock. Whoever hears me and opens, I'll come and I'll sit with them and I'll sup with them. And that's the whole reason as to why we put on this concert. Listen, tomorrow is no promise to no man. When we stand here and we're putting on this, every one of us has things that we're doing. But you know what? We take time out because we know there is a message. And the message of hope, which is Jesus Christ can forgive you. You can get saved and you can be set free. And so... Without wasting time, this scripture that I wanted to read for you, it says, uh, Romans 5, verse 6, it says, For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one would scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for, the, for us. That's the Jesus that we're talking about. He stands in the gap. He stands there for you. When you come before him and say, you know what, I want to put my hope and my faith in you, he says, come my child. All he's asking, repent of your sins. And on that day, when you pass out of time and step into eternity, when you stand before God, Christ comes. He's the advocate. He say, oh yeah, I know that one. They put their faith in me. And that's the whole reason why we put on this concert. So without was wasting any time, for those of you that are here, maybe you've been to church and you're saved, that's fine. But for those of you that are not actually in a relationship with Jesus Christ, what I want to do is invite you to come and taste and see that the Lord is good, that Jesus Christ can forgive sins, Jesus Christ can turn your life around. So with every eye closed, every head bowed, can I just ask, those of you that are here and you want to have a relationship with Jesus Christ, this is a serious moment. Now is the time. Just raise your hand. We'll say a prayer for you. That's all we're asking. We're not here to uh, scare anyone. Our aim is to make sure that people understand who Jesus is and understand that, you know what, time is running out. Tomorrow is no promise to any of us. But if you're here and you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ and you want to start, today is the day. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Don't leave this place without Jesus Christ. 
going again, those that are here and not saved and you want to have a relationship with Jesus, raise your hand up and let us just pray for you. That's all we're asking. Okay, amen. Very well, saints. I'm really, really grateful to have you here today. And so for those of you that have come and you've enjoyed yourselves, we're so glad that you came. Now I'm going to invite my pastor to come. I think... Praise God. I hope you guys had a wonderful time. You know what? I was so blessed, uh, so much so that I want to join them. And I, we're going to sing one more song. Uh, I think, Nasa, you led it. What was it called? Only You Can Satisfy, the one of Jacob's Well. Amen. We're going to sing that song. Um, but, you know, some people here might be wondering, what is this Jacob's well that, that, that they're talking about? Uh, 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 you know, this has been a worship night, which is powerful. But we're going to sing that song one more time. Uh, but as we sing it, I, w- I want to read something from the Bible, uh, uh, and then it will put that, that whole song in context. I know most people here are Christians, uh, uh, but John chapter number four, uh, uh, that, that's really where that song is in, uh, inspired from. Uh, Jesus meets up with this woman. She She's at a well. She's trying to draw water, and Jesus has uh, uh, an encounter with this woman. So John chapter number four, verse number seven. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink, for his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask me uh, for a drink, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. But Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God... And who it is who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, sir, you have nothing to draw with. The well is deep. Where then do you get the living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself as well as his sons and his living and his livestock. Jesus answered and said to her, whoever drinks of this well will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. This woman said, sir, Give me this water that I, may th- that I may not thirst, nor come here to draw. Jesus said to her, Go call your husband. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You have said, Well, I have no husband. For you've had five husbands, uh, and the one whom you have now is not your husband. In that you speak truly. Verse number 21, Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You you worship what you do not know. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. I could go on and on and on. But what Jesus was saying really is, uh, we are all thirsty here. We are all searching for something. Uh, This woman, she had issues. She had problems. Uh, When you have five husbands, you know you have problems. I don't even need to explain that when, you know, husband number one, two, three, four, five, something is going on and she's searching and Jesus says to her, woman, you don't need to search anymore because what I have can satisfy you. And each and every one of us, we are searching in some way, shape or form. There are people, you know, we we are looking for satisfaction. It might be in a husband, in a boyfriend. It might be satisfaction in your job, in your career. It might be satisfaction if I had more money, if I had more children, if I had this. You're looking, you're looking, you're looking. Well, Jesus says, 
don't look any further. I have water that you can drink and it will satisfy you. Those of us that have drunk from the well of Jesus Christ, we can say amen to that. You know what? Jesus truly does satisfy. There is no need to search anymore. And we're going to sing this song with understanding. And that understanding is, listen, there is a well that you can draw from and you will never thirst. There is a well that you can, uh, once you drink of its waters, uh, I don't need to run around uh, looking for girls anymore. Why? Because Jesus has brought about the satisfaction. Uh, I don't need to run around uh, looking for money anymore. Why? Because Jesus... Uh, has brought the satisfaction. I don't need to run around looking for pleasure. You know what? Let me have a spliff here. Let me have a... No, I don't need any of that anymore. Why? Because Jesus has brought about a satisfaction. And because I am satisfied, I can lift up my hands and worship the living God because Jesus truly does satisfy. You read the story of this woman. Jesus says to her, you know what? If you drink the water that I'll give you, it will become like a well on the inside. And every time you're hungry, there is enough uh, in you that you don't need anything external. What is Jesus talking about? He's talking about the Holy Spirit. He says, listen, when you get saved, when you come to Jesus, there is a joy that just bubbles on the inside. No one else can understand it because your situation hasn't changed. But on the inside, you're satisfied. I don't know if you've ever been full of food that you feel, you know, I don't want to eat anymore. I'm, I'm just so, I'm just satisfied. You know, it doesn't matter what restaurant you go to, you might have filled yourself with just bread and water. They might be serving caviar, they might be serving whatever it is. Uh, you, you just want, I've had enough. That's what Jesus does. When you are full of the Spirit of God, it doesn't matter what the world is offering or what's going on, I'm satisfied. And that's what Jesus wants for each and every one of us. Uh, you, you're going to lead us in a song, and we're going to sing it and worship the Lord one more time. And after this, we'll go home, and we'll give God praise, we'll give God honor. You know what, church? Let's all stand together. We're going to worship our God, and we're going to magnify Him. Some of you, you are searching. You don't need to search anymore, because Jesus, He truly does satisfy. Hallelujah.